<clears throat> Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. We're going to discuss another derivatives application and now look at blood flow. Basically, when we consider the flow of blood through a blood vessel such as a vein or artery, we can take the shape of the blood vessel to be basically assume it's a cylindrical tube with radius r and length l. Yeah, so the radius, we just write it down right here it's from the center. This is capital R for radius and then the length L of this, uh, this tube or this vein or artery. But uh, because of friction at the walls of the tube, the velocity V of the blood, if, if it's traveling to the right, is basically greatest along the central axis of the tube and decreases as distance R from the axis increases until V becomes zero at the wall. And what I mean by that is if we basically look at a cross section like this, and if we were to draw, let's say, an arrow representing the velocity or the flow rate, it, at the center would be the highest, and then it would start to decrease as you go further and further away from the axis until you basically get towards zero at the walls area. And this would be the same thing on the bottom as well. Just because there's friction on on the wall when you're really when you're right at it, you're not going to be moving at all, and this is moving away from it at a distance, uh, small r right here. And now basically uh, the relationship between v, the velocity of the the blood or whatever fluid it is, and r, uh, distance away from the axis, is given by the law of laminar flow discovered by the French physician. Jean-Louis Marie Pouvival in 1840. Basically, laminar flow just means smooth flow, not turbulent or anything. It's, it's just going always to the right here, straight. And basically, the the, for, uh, the formula that he discovered is basically V is equal to P, the pressure, divided by four times this uh, Greek letter eta, which is the viscosity, and then this is in the length of the tube and then times it by r squared, the, the total radius minus wherever you are, the small uh, radius here, this variable radius. Yeah, and basically, uh, where n, Greek letter a does, viscosity of the blood just means how thick it is or how sticky it is, and p is the pressure difference between the ends of the tube. So it's basically, if, if the pressure here is someone, let's say p1 and p2, basically p is equal to delta p, and it's actually going to be equal to uh, P1 minus P2. So this is a difference uh, across here. Because if this is high pressure is low pressure, it's going to be going towards the low pressure. And now if uh, P, if the pressure and L are constant, then if we just look at the formula, the only thing that's going to be that velocity is a function of is R right here, if basically this and this are constant. Uh, this one, the viscosity seem to be constant as well. And basically, uh, it, it's a function of r within uh, basically this domain, 0 to r, or r is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to uh, capital R, the total radius. Now, if we look basically at the average rate of change of the velocity as we move uh, from r1 outward to r2, or basically away from the axis, we could write this as basically delta v over delta r. So this is the rate of change with moving away from the center is this equal to, well, velocity at r2 minus velocity at r1, then all divided by r2 minus r1 right here. So this is the average one, but then once again, like all rates of change, if we let delta r in this case approach zero, we obtain the velocity gradient or this change in velocity, uh, but now with respect to r right here. That is basically the instantaneous rate of change of velocity with respect to r, so we could write it as velocity gradient yeah, is equal to the limit as delta r approaches zero of uh, delta delta v over delta r, and this one is just the derivative, this is, de this is just the definition of derivative, and this is going to be dv over dr right here. Now, basically, to help uh, better illustrate this uh, blood flow concept, we'll look at this useful example, of the, which was in my calculus book. Basically, for one of the smaller human arteries, we can take the viscosity to be 0 0.027, and also the, the radius to, of the artery to be 0 0.08 centimeters, the length 2 centimeters, if we're just looking at a small segment, and, and basically the pressure equals 4,000 dynes uh, per centimeter squared. Basically a dyne is just a unit of force and it's just equal to one gram uh, times centimeters divided by second squared or, and it's just basically, if you write it in newtons, 10 to the power of negative five newtons. This is basically really, really small pressure. 
And now the question is, how fast is the blood flowing at the center line and at R equals 0 0.002 centimeters, or yeah, basically away from the center axis? And what is the velocity gradient at 0 0.002 centimeters here, away from the axis? Well, uh, to find the blood flow at the center line, we just first find, uh, just write down the equation again for uh, velocity. So f yeah, this is velocity equals 4 times by pressure divided by... Uh, 4 viscosity times r squared, and this is r small squared right here. So at the center line right here, we'll call this v uh, center cl for center line. If we just put in, uh, th yeah, the calculus book just has the units all set up, so basically we can just plug in these numbers in. So we plug in 4,000 on the top, and then 4 times the viscosity, 0 0.027 times it by the length point, uh, what is this one, actually it's 2 centimeters right here. Yeah, it's 2 right here, uh, and then times it by the radius, which is uh, 0 0.008, I think that's what it was, yeah, 0 0.008 squared right here, remember it's r squared, now, the, now the, the distance away, when you're at the center line, this distance is just 0 right here, so this would be 0, so you're basically minus 0 squared, etc., so it doesn't change anything, so now if you plug this in the calculator, you will get, yeah, you will get 1.185, uh, this is going to be centimeters, yeah, per second right here. So 1.185 centimeters per second. And now if you wanted to get the center line, I mean velocity at basically at, uh, let's go, r equals 0 0.002. This would be the exact same thing right above here. It would be the same thing as uh, copied in, in here, except now you're going to be minusing 0 0.002 uh, all squared right here. So, uh, yeah, centimeters squared. And if you plug this in a calculator, you're going to get 1.11 uh, one centimeters per second. And as you can see, this velocity when you're further away from the center, well, this is clearly less than the VC, uh, the center line to center line velocity, which is 1.85, so it's slightly faster there uh, with because uh, you're looking at centimeters per second. Now, if we look at the velocity gradient at the radius uh, at 0 0.002, well, this is just equal to dv dr, and we could fuse Lebanese notation. This is at r equals 0 0.002 centimeters. So we would just find the derivative first of this function right here. Yeah, so if we just write this down first, now if we want to take derivative, well, we know everything's constant except this one here. So this is the only variable. So then if we take the derivative of, uh, of this whole thing, well, it's just going to be equal to. Yeah, it's just gonna be equal to well, this is a constant. We just we just take it out of the derivative. So for uh, just put this over here. Now we take the derivative of this r squared is zero because this is a constant. So zero, and this is the only thing that's gonna be taken derivative. So minus two r right here. Yeah. So this this is just a derivative. And if we just simplify it, we will get uh, equals two negative two uh, r. Uh, the r times it by p divided by 4, this is the l here, and if we just simplify this, these, these twos cancel, I'll put the p in front actually, this is going to be now 2, this is viscosity times l times it by the radius right here, so this is, actually, yeah, this is dv over dr, I made a mistake, dv over dr or v prime right here, so this is or v prime. Yeah, so we have that. That's a derivative right there. And this one, let's just go equals to V prime and highlight this. So now all we do is plug in our numbers right here. So V V prime at, uh, this is R equals to 0 0.002. This equals 2. This is going to be 4,000 divided by 2 times 0 0.027 times it by, this is going to be 2, and this is all times by r, which is 0 0.002. And now, at this point, we get basically negative 74. Uh, this is going to be centimeters per second per, yeah, per centimeter right here. So this is just the velocity right here, velocity changing at negative, it's just basically you're losing negative 74 uh, centimeters per second every centimeter you go up right here. This is a large number, but the thing is, uh, the radius is not even a centimeter, actually, yeah, it's, it's, it is uh, less than a centimeter, so you're basically going to be uh, moving much uh, slower there. Yeah, so basically this is just a way of showing uh, how the velocity drops as you go further and further away from the center right here. So this is 
And it just gets pretty useful in uh, biology and other other uh, physics and other stuff. Anyway, that's all for today. Hope you learned from this. Uh, I'm not gonna go over the units too much. Uh, this one, the calculus boy just had the units already matching, so you could just put it in and get the centimeters per second. But in another video, I, I may eventually get to basically proving this laminar flow equation and other stuff. But that'll be in future videos. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this. Remember, you can download these exact notes in the Dropbox link below. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.